And when you take that combination of every single piece of satire or humor must be the most evil thing possible, and then you combine it with that philosophy of like, well, we can't be tolerant of intolerant people. You create a culture where naturally the progression is gonna be, we have to come down with the band hammer on anything that could seem intolerant. And what happens is- How can, my you, content. How can you say that and when maybe, you've literally yeah, never I've had got, a con- how, bias. How can you, how can you say so that? I'm gonna get you're being, I, I don't really think you're being passive aggressive at all. But yeah, you've never had a conversation with me to make these statements. No, 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 I am so mad. No, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not about- Wait, wait, Jessica, please. It's not, it's not- You should make her apologize though. She, cause she threw a temper tantrum when she was I don't have any reason for her to apologize. We're not being that petty. Um, hey Lauren. How are you gonna say that like white people owe reparations to black people in the US but you're not gonna make her apologize for throwing a temper tantrum in the show? I don't know how those things are related. Wait, wait, no, wait. I might leave in a second. I wanted to ask, did we find something we actually disagree on yet? Because I know- I know. Um, all I heard was that Mr. Girl said that it was ridiculous because you guys were disagreeing on Dude, his Lauren, content. Leave. But... We're not, yeah. leave. Wait, we're not wait, 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 Lauren. You guys were trying to find something. You were like, do you disagree? Do you think I've been banned? Did you find something? Is there a back and forth? Oh, well, we did have a Wait, big back on. and forth on normalizing Lauren, pedophilia. I think it's absolutely crazy to me that you came in this space and then kind of ranted about the fact that we were grasping for straws for a disagreement. And now you're coming back to the space and literally asking the question, hey, is there a disagreement that's worth talking about? Like you're literally projecting as hard as I freaking know how. Um, there were plenty of disagreements and I intended for the conversation to go there, but like literally, I don't know think you can turn off your debate bro brain. Like there, if there's not that no, many people no, no, in the panel, no, no, you could have taken no, no, your no. time and we of would course, have gotten there. No, 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 bro. but that's not how it's done. Like, have you ever, what? You're supposed to organize before a show happens. People that generally disagree with each other have two different stances. They get together and debate them. Or you have people that have a set conversation that come in and discuss the set conversation. This one was just all over the place. I got you. Next time, I next time you have a panel, next time you have a panel, you can run it that way. But I haven't ran my panel that way. It would have been fine if you would have actually just turned off debate bro brain for a little bit and actually been part of it instead of just being rude in that way. But if you if you want to be part of the conversation, we can Dude, do so. One of the things that I wanted to get at was That's specifically one of the things no one of the things that i wanted to get at was specifically about your ban and about your cancellation and how it related to maybe the pushing of the idea about the great replacement that was going to be, there were going to be some disagreements there i would imagine that you would disagree okay, with that so are, pedro okay, also was there... going to go there but hold on but instead of us being able to get there You've just jumped the gun and tried to force the conversation in a way. You can relax a little bit and we can actually engage in a conversation if it's something that you're capable of doing. But it's not yeah, going to be in your vibe. And you were trying to hardcore. Please, Destiny, don't. No, no, you don't got to do that here. It's okay. We're here. We're here now. Listen, every. Let's okay, okay. Destiny, don't. Uh, sh <laughs> Destiny agrees with me. This is. Like it, it was just boring as fuck. Okay, okay man, I got there's you. six people talking. All right, it was That's boring as fuck. Sure, I get six you. people it's talking. Vibe. Like it's just. You right. need to feel the vibe. If you can't, if you can't handle boring, because it doesn't need to be heated in order for us to discuss. No, no, like, it's not even about it being heated. It. You can have calm conversations that are interesting. You know that, right? Lauren, you have good points. It was rude to bring them up when you did the way you did. Fanatic, she gave you some decent advice at the beginning. Even if we're all relatively on the same page, you should have some prompts. That are able to get us into the point of disagreeing and to where we have the flow. This sure. should not Lycan's only signing with her because they had a friendly debate before. So I got you. So anyway, so moving forward, uh, I think one of the things that I wanted to talk about was specifically if there was a distinction between like maybe like Destiny's band and Mr. Girl's band and Lauren Southern's band. Like I think part of that is I felt like when it came to the ban of Destiny, that is incredibly neb nebulous and like literally his entire platform. It felt like to me, and I get think to a lot of people was about like advocating uh, against the right uh, for trans rights and for inclusion in, in communities and things like that, uh, for, for inclusion of marginalized people. So then it seemed like it was a very huge departure from like the general tenor of his content. But whereas it came to like um, Lauren Southern and Mr. Girl, it seemed like that there might've been a, big, a bit of a distinction there. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no misunderstanding. I would say there's a misunderstanding with me where people think I am advocating for child abuse or lowering the age of consent, or they think other people are going to think that and it's not worth it to let me stay. I don't think there's a misunderstanding with Destiny's position. I think that if he got banned for saying trans women shouldn't participate in sports uh, on, on women's teams, which it sounds likely he did get banned for saying that, they are intentionally, correctly choosing to ban him based on what he actually thinks. 
And that's, that is different. And, and to me, that signifies, um, there's a lot of talk about like the pendulum swinging the other way, just kind of generally, but I feel like the, it's specifically um, trans rights advocacy, or at least that's what I'm pretty, pretty focused on in this conversation about destiny, that the definition of transphobic has now moved again. And now yeah, I think we, like, we all agree with this, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, but oh, no. I, I guess... <laughs> okay, well, let's get it. So mother, let's, mother, let's... Motherfucker, we, we agree with it. But the well, question no, let's is, get into the what, are we gonna, what, what are we going to do about it? Yeah, how do we, we wanted to bring up the great reply. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. Why, there's, we're not going to solve this problem here, right? What, like, well, what are we, we going to do about it? Change Twitch moderation? Here's, the, here's how we can change it. We can either, one, change all of the Twitch moderation team. Two, change the actual no. Twitch TOS. Three, change no. all the society and culture. Or four, yes. buy enough voting stock and Amazon that we could force changes from Twitch, okay, from shareholder meetings. So we or can't five, do have a, Or five, five. Position five, have a smarter position than the great replacement or a smarter position than just saying outright trans people uh, should should uh, do whatever. No, that's a, right? I think that's a fine. You can you can position. use tact. You can actually engage your brain to make your the p person who's promoting the thing that's obviously stupid. Right. In a way on their face, make it say themselves and look stupid. Do you. That OK. Way, uh, OK, on hold on. I, I agree with you. I'm going to give you the serious take for what's happened, okay? Are you ready? I'm going to explain what happened, okay? This is yeah. what happened. Take your okay? fucking pessimism. Check, <laughs> yeah. check your okay. pessimism. Long time ago, okay, we, and I know because I was on the mountain of this, okay? There was this concept called the, we, can't, we can't be tolerant of intolerant people. And the idea was is that if you get enough bad faith actors on a given platform using advanced forms of satire and irony, you can push incredibly harmful ideas through relatively like non-harmful or non-offensive rhetoric. And that's something that you had to like be mindful of. I think that it was okay to be mindful of that. And I think it was okay to call it out. But I think what happened was people on the right or alt-right or the kind of just like trolley people on 4chan were so good at taking like innocuous phrases and statements and weaponizing these in ways that people on the left's brain fucking exploded that you started to get into a world where you could create mottos like it's okay to be white and people will be frothing at the fucking mouth when they hear that. Like, ah! And then eventually you're in a world where people on the left are like thinking that like every single time they fucking see like a particular thing, they have to destroy it because it's literally Nazism, right? You've got like pictures of people making the okay sign to be like, that's a fucking Nazi. And people are calling it out fucking everywhere. And when you and when you take that combination of every single piece of satire or humor must be the most evil thing possible. And then you combine it with that philosophy of like, well, we can't be tolerant of intolerant people. You create a culture where naturally the progression is going to be, we have to come down with the ban hammer on anything that could seem intolerant. And what happens is, is there's a lot of positions that can be staked out where you can say things that sound like kind of bad, or that sounds like something that somebody that's hateful might say, even if you're not hateful and you, and you might say it, and, and all of these things all of a sudden become impossible to have as part of the normal discourse. So the statement, trans women and cis women shouldn't compete with each other, could be said by a reasonable person, but it could also be said by an incredibly transphobic person. And anything that could be said by a transphobic person must become banned. And that's the conundrum that we find ourselves in today, where any joke or any like satire or any statement that seems like it could come from a racist person becomes racist, regardless of whether or not it is racist or if the person uttering it is racist. That's the issue that we have. Okay, the but problem. the problem is that it becomes self-reinforcing because of course. as that happens, you become more likely to use satire, more likely to hide your true beliefs, which then just adds to the view that you might not be safe. Like a lot of times it's true. There's yeah, another thing, cares? right? I think that's the issue because what happens is you end up seeding so much. We lost Pepe. We don't have Pepe anymore. He belongs to the yeah. fucking Nazis now. Hitler got him from the grave, right? The issue is you end up seeding so much ground that you all of a sudden, like, you have to screech and re against every fucking innocuous statement. And now, like, a fucking 55-year-old mom that's like, I support the cops, has become a fascist fucking Nazi, right? You can't, you just, you can't seed that much ground. You end up well, looking insane. Like it, and well, then, like, you end up like, losing, like, everything in society. Jesus Christ, now like I fucking, re when I open fucking Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, I feel like I'm reading fucking Mein Kampf. Like it's gotten insane that like so okay, much ground well, has been seeded to like the so then, insane people on the left. Well, it sounds like you're agreeing that you need to be able to more accurately verbalize your opinions in a no. manner that actual people can hear. No, that's so, the problem. So, yeah. Actual well, people well, can hear what well, you're well, saying. Can I give you? Can I give you? Can I, yeah, can I give it. you an example? Can I give you an example? And it's in the room right now. Lauren, do you think it was smart to actually at one time hold the position of the Great Replacement theory? Do you think that was smart? Did you know it wasn't Wait, controversial when I talked about it? 
And thank you. Wait, wait, wait. It's when you say smart, you, 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 have to, you have to just hooked onto it because your side of the base was saying, hey, that's the thing. Let's sell it. Right. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think you know what you're Pedro. I don't think you know what you're talking about. What what side of my Did side you... of the base we're talking okay, about? Okay. I think I think Lauren's a good idea. Wait, 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 Mr. Girl, let her talk. Let her talk, Mr. Girl. In 2015. Yeah, I want to. What? Who? Who on the time? right? We're talking about the Great Replacement in early 2016, 2015. Who, no, who? You said I latched onto it because it was some big right wing thing that I just decided to jump onto. So Richard didn't exist back then. Did Richard, Richard Spencer talk about the Great Replacement? Yes, he did. When? Are you serious? It's Since he when? was on the internet, ma'am. I, I mean, hey, I, hey, 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 really quick. Well, actually, wait, did do you, anybody do you know? That, do you, hey, no, no, hey, wait, the wait. entire the entire Killstream cast, right? Did they talk about their great replacement? Not hold it, but were they talking about it? The great replacement. I the know. Great were they answering your it. own question? Yes or yeah. no? Were they talking about it? Right. The great replacement was an extremely obscure. All right, so we're not delusional. We're not delusional. Wait, wait, wait. People hold on. Talking hold about on, Pedro. It, and you jump on the way. Pedro, Pedro, you're let not. Her, what? Let, let her respond, and Lauren, please answer the question that he asked. No, I, di I didn't hear anyone talk about the great replacement when I spoke about it. I found it from an obscure French author named Brunard Camus. It was certainly not being discussed in right wing circles. And it wasn't controversial at the time because it was just this obscure left, -le socially left leaning author that had made this theory that I found and decided to make it the title of my video. It hadn't gotten the notoriety it has today because it wasn't in that shooter's manifesto yet. So I don't think you know what you're talking about when you bring this up, Pedro. Yeah, I, I just don't. I, 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 can, I can prove it right now. Hey, Destiny, when you debated what? Nick Fuentes, James Alsup, any of these characters, right, that you've met on the kill stream, uh, Vince James, were they talking about, the, talk about the Great Replacement? Uh, I think so. I, when was Lauren's first video? When was Lauren's video titled? Oh, my gosh. Okay, you know what? Wait, okay, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Pedro, oh, wait, 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 he's, he's wait, answering wait, the question. On, hold, on, wait, Still, wait, hold on, you can wait. Hold on, wait, wait, let me finish. No, I was not accept that to Pedro. Go ahead, Destiny. Oh. Thank you, brother. Okay, listen, brother. Okay, if you're gonna accuse me of shit, okay, I don't know when her first video was published. Right. So her contention right now is that people weren't talking about it when she was. Now, we all know that a lot of people on the right have talked about it. I know. I've heard Stefan Molyneux talk about it. I've heard Richard Spencer talk about it. I've heard like other people allude to it, if not using those exact words. Um, we've heard Tucker Carlson talk about it on fucking Fox News. The question is, though, is did Lauren bring it up first? Was she the progenitor of this idea? Or was this something that everybody was talking about and she latched onto? I don't know the answer to like that. Like Schrodinger's I progenitor. No, if you want to accuse me of uh, causing a shooting, then I was the one who literally invented the theory. But if you want to win in this debate, <laughs> Then so, I took a bandwagon position on it. Well, yeah, because like stream. you bring you bring up like the kill stream, for instance. Like I don't know if the kill stream was existing in 2016, 2017, I don't right? Think like, it did. Yeah. Yeah. So I so I, I just don't know the timelines. That's I, I don't I don't. But if you have the timelines, the get sir, up sir, and sir, 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 up hard. Go get the timelines and figure it out. So wait, I want to hold on. Hold on. Published a video in July of 2017. It's in the New Yorker Idol. I just posted there. Nice. I want to. I want to respond to this. It was July 2016. I want to respond I just to want to know. I, I just want to know. We we know she wasn't the one that arbitrated it into the arena. I totally agree. But she is. Well, no wait. She's saying idea, she correct. She's, well, she's saying she might have been one of the first people that did it. Right. Per, per, perfect. One of the first. One mm -hmm. uh, along the lines of the front uh, uh, of the front guard. But she didn't come up with the idea. Correct. No, it was Renaud Camus' theory. My video on it was citing his theory. What is your point here? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I don't... My, my my point is you did something stupid and did not verbalize a point in a way you said great replacement theory. And Wait. like Destiny pointed out in his long-winded speech, people take terms and then internalize them into whether, oh, they said that, he's a Nazi. Oh, they said this, they're a blue head lefty, right? You need to be able to use that mind of yours, write down what your positions are and verbalize it in a manner that is palpable. And Pedro, Pedro, that did you watch my great replacement video? No, oh, you've deleted it now, so I don't know. Wait, 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 no, 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 wait, 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 no, no, like, Pedro, did you watch my Great Replacement video? No, man. What, what is he but saying? But guess what? But guess what? I Same saw no, you with the interview with did, Stephen Wait, did you Molyneux say? Did you say no, no, man? Did you say no? Yeah. Did you say no? Yeah. He did. I believe he did say no. Yes. Why the yeah. fuck are you commenting about whether I did something stupid or not when you haven't even watched the video? He was asking you if you espoused 
a great replacement. Because well, you got banned. Wait, if you got hold banned on. Mr. That's not how that goes. He was wait, asking wait, wait, wait. you. I don't think he was asking you. I, I, video, I, never, though, right? I <laughs> never got banned for anything related to the great replacement stuff. Like, I literally think Pedro oh, was talking canceled. out of his ass. I don't I, think he knows point, anything he, about he my video. He hasn't watched it. Question? He knows nothing about the timeline. <laughs> I got you. The my, question, my the question, is hold on, Mr. Girl. The question that he was asking you, the question that he was asking you was whether or not you espoused the grace replacement and i get that like you're saying well it wasn't controversial at the time but it's incredibly controversial now and so then i think if you were one of the people that was like espousing that view and helping to spread that view not just on your very first video called the great replacement but also like in other pre previous videos i think it was like with rebel media or something like that then i think that at that point then maybe there might be some sort of responsibility wait, no. towards Listen, the wait, hold on let me finish my statement it may, you're the may, moderator what happened you. to you not being a panelist i got you i got you so Lauren, I'd like Don't to Lauren, Lauren, hold on, fanatic. hold on, keep going, keep going, hold on. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So there might Go. be some sort of connection to, with regards to the idea of the Great Replacement and whether or not that started to color some of the left's opinion of you and and to and le led towards some of the energy towards like your cancellation and things like that. Do you think that any of that is true? I I think this is an interesting subject. If we can try to morph this into an interesting subject. In that when I was talking about these things, because the right had such a grasp on the internet at the time, it wasn't controversial. The Great Replacement was not associated with any sort of violence. It wasn't like this massively, oh my gosh, what has she done thing. Most of the videos I did, you had Ethan Klein, who has a show with Hassan now, that was sharing videos of mine using my content. You know, you had... Um, uh, what's that? Anthony Fantano with anti-SJW channels. I was just kind of like the, you know, a bit more right wing than the mainstream at that point. So when we see a tip to the right, we're going to see a very interesting thing happen where you're going to have people retroactively canceled for things that were perfectly normal to say today, five years from now, perhaps. So when you tell me, Pedro, oh, you did something stupid, Lauren, that's really easy to say now that the entire internet has been taken over by a bunch of psychotic lefties. And yeah, you know, the Great Replacement is very, very right wing compared to now. But guess what? Five years ago, it wasn't that crazy. Do, do, you, do you believe in the Great Replacement now or do you think it was problem? Do you think that... It doesn't the, do, matter. That's hold like on, asking hold me on, if hold on. I don't care if matter. you think it matters, Mr. Girl. I'm asking a question. Yeah, Lauren, Lauren, a question. Lauren, Lauren I, don't care about, I don't care about your opinion. It I don't care. Show, Mr. Girl. I, I don't care about your opinion with that. I'm okay, asking her no. a question. Lauren, do you think that the, I, the idea of the Great Replacement is bad now? Do you think that that view is toxic? Do you want to have a debate over the Great Replacement? I agree. Mr. Girl is actually finally trying to keep us on topic. This is about cancellation this no we found a good point of disagreement i'm asking the question can dream. you please yeah, answer can you, you please can think, you please wait, wait, answer wait. the question don't answer don't answer that <laughs> make her answer it <laughs> no, hold on actually hold on i think she should and the <laughs> reason i do think no i don't need you guys to tell me i don't need you guys i don't need you to say it i don't need you to say it if i have to mute everyone i will i'm gonna reach out the mute i don't need you guys to tell me why she needs to i'm asking her to answer the question let her do it please do you think that the great replacement is a bad view now what is the great replacement fanatic do you not know after you've made several videos about it? No, I think no, I you're aware. I think you're aware of that. It's good or bad. I okay. want to know if you even because Pedro sure as hell doesn't know. Listen. Do you know? I don't want the people questioning me about videos I've made or content I've put out there when they don't even know what it actually was or have never watched it. So if you can tell me what the Great Replacement is, I'll answer your question. Tell her what it is, fanatic. Great, as opposed, as opposed, as opposed, no, Pedro, Pedro, Pedro stop, please. She asked me a direct question. Jesus Christ, I'm not going notion that simply because i'm not going to lay out what the great replacement is that that some sort, sort of some sort of way absolves you from answering the question it's a question directly asked to you no, and if you you're, don't if know you're, what it is if I i'm not going to answer a question you don't even understand yourself okay. because it's going to mean something different to you because if you have in your head a definition of the great replacement that isn't real or is associated to something else and i answer yes no like my answer doesn't matter if you don't know what the hell you're asking Okay. So okay, then, like at, to, this point, like at this point, at this point, at this point, at this point, I'm going to move. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and recuse myself back from the conversation. Because you don't I, I, know what it is. At this point, at this point, I'm going to recuse myself from the conversation. <laughs> uh, afterwards, afterwards, when we're done with this panel, I will gladly get into the open panel that you we're going to be. You have no idea after, what it is. After, after we're done, I'm going to mute you, Lauren, if you can't, if you can't be civil here. 
After we're done with this panel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to what, what I'm going to do. And I, Mr. Girl, I'll never invite you again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to. I'm never going back. I fine. got you. That's great, and I'm glad. So what I will do is you. I will move forward, and I will gladly That's explain. I will gladly. I got you, bro. Okay. Stop. Let Fanatic finish. Guys. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Stop. So we're all it's just that simple. Stop. Right. I will gladly go into the okay. discussion about what the great replacement is, but I don't think that it's at all re my responsibility to fully define something in order for someone who's made several videos about it to just simply say, I do think it's toxic or I do think it's problematic. And I think that's where we're at now. And I think some of the smoke involving some of these situations is absolutely relevant. When you have Lauren Southern, who won't simply say, no, I don't support this thing, or Mr. Girl, who won't simply say, no, I'm not a pedophile. But then you have Destiny, who will gladly say, like, no, I've I've always been in support of like trans rights or I've I've never like espoused anything racist or whatever. So I think the positions is and I think the difference, the distinguishment between Destiny, Mr. Girl, and um, Lauren Southern is that Destiny has always been incredibly forthright and forthcoming, specifically regarding his positions. Um, if he says something that is taken in a certain way, he will walk it back. For example, with the Demon Mama situation, he'll gladly say, "I'm sorry, I didn't do that," and no, I don't believe in misgendering people, as he said earlier in this platform. But when the other two are asked questions, then they go ahead and refuse to do so. So, um, I think to go, be fair, I think the comparison would be, if, if, if I may, I think the comparison would be like, if you would have just asked me point blank, are you transphobic? I would probably have to ask you what you mean by that. Because to a, some people, or maybe even a large amount of people, I, I might be transphobic, right? Like if your definition of transphobic is you don't accept like other kin or neo pronouns or people or a variety of like things, like, or like trans women in sports, then I, I would I would have to ask you like, I need to know what you mean when you say transphobic for me to answer that question. So I think sure. that like for Lauren's position here, if there is like, there might be a definition of the great replacement in your mind where great replacement means we literally murder all black people in the world. And then we only have white people left and you're, and she, that might be what's in your head. And in her head, great replacement might just mean like immigration that reduces the white population of some place or doesn't respect like local law. Like, and if the two definitions are widely apart, asking somebody that question can give them an answer that doesn't yield any insight because you guys are still in fundamentally different understandings of what the word means. Like, like, like in, I got you like in and doobie than Mr. Girl. Oh, so, man. Lauren, I would like to ask you. Yeah. In the best of faith, uh, as I have defended you on Twitter before you and I ever knew each other. My, my king, um, my, my Twitter. I, I know, defending. I know. One of the things that always gets brought up by people like Lance and Merrick and whatnot, it's always the great replacement first. It would oh, I very we much. Flare gun. It would very much be nice, and I would appreciate it, if you would define what you believe the great replacement is and then say to you, and then tell me whether or not you still believe in it. Because when people bring that up, and I'm like, I don't know if Lauren necessarily believes in that, I really don't have any ammunition. So I'm asking you to arm me against the legion of Lauren-hating sons of bitches. Give your fans some talking information, points, please. Well, this is, what is, this is what makes it such a frustrating conversation to have, is almost everyone I talk to on the left doesn't actually know what it is. Like, Fnatic can't define it. Pedro, I don't know what your politics are, but he doesn't know what it is. He's never even watched my sure, video. I like can define him. it for you. I, I could define it for you. Okay, yeah, what is the that? great replacement? No, 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 don't do that. Oh, okay. oh, never oh, mind. I'm, I'm, I'm already accusing myself. Go ahead, I'm do what you want to do. Talking, do what you want to do, Pedro. Talk. Do what you want to do, Pedro. I, I don't care if you keep talking. You could leave for all I care, but go ahead. You guys continue your discourse. You're going to be okay over there, it. What is the definition you got? I want to hear it. The great replacement is the theory that as the population of the white person decreases in an area, so will the uh, ethics in that or the conduct of the people will also deteriorate as more people of, well, color enter that population and replace those people who are, were originally white, you know, they will deteriorate the society. It's pretty much saying as the white population decreases and the uh, colored people, you know, population increases the rate the state of the society in general will decrease i don't actually think it's a uh, out going out murdering people i never said that uh i don't think that of you lauren i don't i don't think you espouse violence what i said originally was that you espouse you say things that are uh not well spelled out so you think i said what you just said yes ma'am so did you watch my video once again i'm gonna ask well, ma'am, I think you said great replacement amongst people in a climate where other people may have been saying violent action will be taken. And then, like Destiny said previously before, if you remember, once people hear great replacement, 
that internalized as a trigger within people to say, oh, that's a Nazi. That's a person who just outright hates colored people. So did you watch my video? I just, I'm sorry. Yeah. If you didn't watch the, did, did you watch her video, Pedro? No, no, he already no, not watch question. Okay, no. okay. What's so, Lord, just he didn't watch your video. Yeah. Yeah, I know. She doesn't know. remember, was it? That video was five years old. Like, I guarantee she was. So what's, the, what's your lying, definition? Yes, okay. Now that I've given my definition, what's your definition? Lord? So that's not, that's not the definition I gave in my video. That is yeah. not... I, and here's what's so frustrating is I wasn't even like playing. Can you give us the definition? Don't do it. Do it. Make her give the definition. Pedro did. He was nice enough to. I think Lauren should have to give a definition. The Great yeah, Replacement but... was a theory oh, founded by Renaud Camus, and it came from his idea of replacism, where he believes one thing cannot just replace another. So, especially when it's like it's something that has some sort of significance. So, in the state of populations, he would say, you can't just take, um, you know, the Swedish population and put the Japanese people in Sweden and have it be the same thing. That's part of his replacism. But replacism theory also goes towards other things as well, like a relationship. We're making everything more and more replaceable today, right? Uh, if, if I break up with a girlfriend, I can just replace her. Thanks. Replacism theory, in his opinion, he's like, no, actually, people, things, these things, they're not as replaceable as we like to think they are. So the great replacement, when he talks about that, he says we are having immigration to such a great degree that the things that make civilizations unique are getting erased through, you know, a, a mass movement of people with different ideologies, different values, different ethics, in some cases, particularly when it is not a slow trickle of immigration. That was the definition I spoke about in my video, which I don't think a lot of people disagree. I, I would say that is probably a normal agreeable thing worldwide not in the west not on twitch but if you ask someone in latin america if you ask someone in china any most most of the world would say that makes sense right um i didn't know at the time when i made this video that he also had some weird stuff about you know uh certain groups controlling the world right the jews controlling the world i didn't actually i'm not even sure that might be fake news i can't I even control this fucking panel well that well that's beautiful Lauren. i think his wikipedia that you has been definition. redefined a bit okay but um yeah I, I, I don't know yeah andrew's ready to go on the attack let's hear it pedro what do you got no, no it's not it's not an attack i just want to hear the rest of the panel say do you hear the similarity in her definition and my definition no no, they no, were very no dumb. I, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think this is the issue, Pedro. Okay, like, if you're going to accuse her of, of saying stupid three. things and, and, and blast her for putting out this video, you probably should watch the video because there are people who will say that just acknowledging that America is going to be like, uh, that white people are going to be a minority in America at some point, right? Um, they'll call that, if you acknowledge that and you talk about that, they'll say that you're pushing great replacement shit, right? So, like, there are various versions of this thing you're talking about. So, if you're going to call her stupid or say that she did a bad thing when she talked about this, something called great replacement, you should probably know exactly what she was saying. My bad, Doobie. This is okay. the exact issue you had. My bad, my bad, This is, this bad, is the exact Doobie. issue you had cool. with Max earlier. Doobie, cool. When he said that, when he said that he was he was Doobie, normalizing pedophilia, when fine. he does nothing it's of the fine. sort. It's fine. It's fine, Doobie. We'll we'll just fast forward. Lauren, do you still hold that, or do you denounce? This is this is what you don't understand. This wasn't a belief. I was saying, yep, this is my belief. It was a video I did analyzing mass immigration yeah, and his so it wasn't like this is my i've never been like i am a great replacement representative that is wait actually if i can ask a question pedro do you disagree with that definition she gave what part of that do you disagree with and why i'm curious no i think i think that is the definition i think it no, should no, be no i mean like is there is there that analysis do you disagree with some part of that analysis and if so what and why why do i disagree with her analysis because it bases upon the you know, skin color of people being. Wait, when the, did I say skin color? Wait, we never talked about. Hold on. So let's assume, for instance, yeah, uh, that Sweden, a million. So, so let's, say, let's say that we. So, so why does she? Use, why does she choose Sweden? We all. We, we're making assumptions, Sweden. but let's say, let's say for instance, like a million people swapped places um, in China with a million mm -hmm. people in Kenya or the United States or Sweden, if we want. Right? right. Would we assume that if we watched the culture, you know, twenty years from then, would these cultures diverge at all, or would they have taken the same path that they would have anyway? They would diverge. Okay, so that divergence is essentially what we're talking about, or what Lauren would be talking about when she's saying the Great Replacement, right? Agreed, but would people be saying it deteriorates at the same time? I don't she's think she, that? in her definition, she never mentioned deteriorating. She just okay. said it would be different, and right? That, that, that's the I, idea of the her, replacism, I, that yeah, you can't just yeah. replace one thing for another and have it be the same, right? And we're, and we're making common sense here, but you hear my definition, and you know for a fact it was the one 
that was being sound blasted over the airwaves. And this right? is why I ask so you what so your definition is. be easily rejected. And when I say my definition, I can call it wicked, evil, no, it's, it, it, it should be thrown to the fire. Whereas we know the history of the position and the people who claim the position, right? And we analyze it and we just can't say no when we ask Lauren. Lauren, see the issue? No, I, wait, but do you see the issue with you've taken something descriptive and now you've applied a morality to it and now anybody that agrees with the same description that you just agreed with, you, you seem like you, you do agree with the Great Replacement, that analysis. But by your own definition, would your agreement there make you... No, I don't agree with you. I I don't agree. See, this is where you you need to examine our worldview, right? Anybody, if you Mm -hmm. knew me, can be Christian, white, black, yellow, or whatever. That's wait, not, wait, wait, no, we, we don't wait, argue. Wait, 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 nobody's just There are plenty of Christian that. like Catholic churches and shit that are in like fucking South Korea and Japan well, and China. Well, I I could, China. Well, 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 here's a drastic example. If I went to a church in South Korea where, where I used to be stationed and they were Christian, I wouldn't see any difference in the way they described Jesus Christ. It would be the same thing. You see, there is you can put all the black people in Kenya in a church and bring them all over to the church here in America. And if they have the Bible, right, as their no, as their uh, standard, yeah, so I'm going to say that that's not true. No, no, wait, wait, real quick, real quick. Yeah, from from personal experience, I'll tell you. Yes, it is. It is true. It is true. Not true. I have personal experience there. Okay. Well, you tell me if I'm wrong then. So here's my here's a little bit of lived experience for me. Okay. When I go into a white middle class Catholic church. It is a very serious ordeal. Um, you've got, you memorize all the phrases. Everybody's very quiet. The kids aren't making any noise. Like that's like the norm in every white middle-class Catholic church that I've been to. Um, so when I'm, I'm down in Hialeah or in some place in Omaha, if I go to a Catholic Hispanic church, it is way different. The songs that they sing are different. Even if it's the same like words, they've got different songs. The kids are running around and screaming. People are like talking a lot more. It's it, it's a totally different atmosphere, even though it's the exact same religion and the exact same mass process, right? Given to so like I think that you can find differences on how people practice their faith, even if it is the same faith. No, I I agree with you, sir. But the the problem here is you've used Catholics. I, I I'm not Catholic at all. And okay, when we, we don't talk need to about use... we, we, if okay. you if you talk to a Catholic. And you talk to me, a Christian, about what the sufficiency of Christ's uh, sacrifice is, you get totally different answers. And therefore, they are promoting a totally different Jesus. See, this is, you just took. Pedro, two there are Christian mal- militias in Africa that burn witches at the stake, right? The culture that the, that the religion is being expressed in or practiced in is going to inform yeah, how that, that religion is practiced. People who go right, so so it doesn't make sense that you can just take a million Christians from part of the world. And put them in any other order, history. they're going to be the same fucking way. We like, know that's, We're getting away from the point. Then what do you... Or, or, so or, you disagree with this? what you said how earlier, though. How about this? The definition that I propose, we can all agree that a lot of people were actually saying, Lauren, can you denounce my definition at least? I'm not going to denounce yes. shit for you. I'm not going to let you just r- ask me random and stuff anything. and put random and things and just forever. denounce it. Okay, hold on. I, all right. I, let her finish. I, I want to respond. Mr. Gr- I want to respond. I got Justin. Uh, let her finish. Okay. Do you, I'm Pedro, you. Pedro, uh, do you denounce kicking puppies? Do you denounce? Yes. Like, I'm not going to yes. do oh, that. Yes. Okay, wait, wait. Yes. Like, so, not, so I, I got you. Lauren yes. Southern, Lauren, Lauren, you don't have to. But I think it's really interesting because specifically you asked, you told both of us. You said for me to define it, and you said for Pedro to de- define it, and then you and neither go- of you have watched my hold video. On, hold on, or could you define you it. said you said if you can please not interrupt me. You said for Pedro to define it, and then you said for me to define it, and you said if we did so, then you would answer the question on whether or not you agreed with it. So Pedro gave you his exact definition as you asked him to do, and now he's asking you to keep your end of the bargain, which was to denounce his definition. So now that he's given his definition and what his view of what that is, can you denounce it or are you going to renege on what you said you would do earlier? So his definition is that if you bring other people to countries that and replace them, it makes it worse. No, I sure I denounce that. I think it makes it different, right? I think people have different cultures. I don't think people have like, you know, you are a worse people because you're different than the West. I think people are just different, right? And and we need to acknowledge those differences and those differences in cultures. Thank you for doing I'm not, that. I'm not, a, I'm not a I'm not like a Thank you. you know supremacist here and there. I know everyone thinks that. I never but... called you a supremacist. See, that's what we're what asking you to do. Okay, okay, I, I, can I please? Go ahead, Mr. Please. Girl. You can finally go in. Okay. I'll let you. Thank you. Here's my solution to this. <laughs> the final one. It's the final <laughs> solution. Thank you. I was, gonna, so I, I was thinking of saying it. I'm glad you did it for me. Go ahead. Um, biting bullets. So 
in this conversation, somebody says, Pedro, you, I know you, you, wanna, you, think I'm a, you think I'm a supremacist, Lauren says. And Pedro says, well, I never said that. I didn't say that. And Pedro says to Lauren, Lauren, you said that, uh, you know, if we get a bunch of black people in the United States and replace a bunch of white people, then there's going to be crime. And Lauren says, well, I'll, well, 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 when did I say that? When did I say that? And the reason that these interactions are happening fucking endlessly, and it's happening to Destiny 2, where it's saying, Destiny, you're a Nazi, you hate trans people. And he's like, well, I didn't, I didn't say I hate trans people. I just said this thing about sports. Nobody knows what anybody means because political correctness and dog whistling are two sides of the same coin. When you do more of one, you get more of the other. So the more you are unwilling to just bite the bullet and say, yeah, I said that, yes, this is what I mean, this is exactly what I believe, then the more other people have to be careful to, be avoid, to avoid being um, associated with, with what you're saying. And this is what I'm being accused of too, I'm being accused of dog whistling. Nobody's saying like, I, I actually said that we should rape children. They're saying, well, because of the thing you said about cuties, I can extrapolate, you probably think this, because you probably think this, because you probably think this. We've gotten ourselves into a situation where the only way anybody will trust you is if you say blatantly racist, incredibly offensive things, because uh, frankly, most of us would rather listen to a racist person than a liar, because at least we know you mean what you're saying. But then if you so, do genuinely have nuanced opinions on things, people just assume you're lying. Yes, you have exactly. You an extreme unless you're yeah, so when, you, so, so like when I was talking, I was interviewing a pedophile last week. And I, every time I asked him a question, I'd say, do you think, do you think pedophilia is a sexual disorder? And he, was, he would say, well, you know, I, I think that um, one way to look at it is you blah, 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 blah. And he would just go on and on and on, going on in circles and circles and circles. And I kept saying like, dude, every time you give an answer that's longer than 10 seconds, people think you're just saying that you are going to fuck kids or that you want to fuck kids. Like you have to, the, especially with a pedophile, the, the assumption of dog whistling is everywhere. But now we're all talking to each other like this. So I know, I know, Stephen, that you're, you're pessimistic, but I want more optimism. I want us to believe that we can change the culture and you out of fucking anybody... Uh, one of the pioneers of ha even having these conversations in this format, you should know that you can change it. And I think that, yeah, I think biting bullets and, and standing near the, the uncomfortable place that the, where, where you stake your, your claims and your beliefs, you have to stand there and just take it. Destiny, let me ask you a question. Because speaking of biting bullets... Oh, I, uh, sorry, on. Fanatic, I do have to run, so I, I just need to say goodbye because I have real-life calls. Um, I appreciate that I came back and there was a bit of a back and forth and everything. This was fun. I don't hate you all. I was just uh, being a woman. No. Oh, shit. Now I'm going to get banned for sexism. No, I appreciate you all. I had fun. Uh, Mr. Girl will probably be uh, chatting next week, so I'll see you there. Steven, you there. I think I'm seeing you tomorrow. Everyone, have fun. Yeah. Peace out. Maybe don't let her disrespect you. Tell her fuck off, fanatic. No, I don't, back I don't believe in any of that. Hey, Lauren, I, I do think, uh, like, again, this wasn't about, like, trying to, like, get you or anything. I, I, I really was hoping that we would eventually get to those things, but there was going to be a conversation and things were going to happen in good form. I get that you've never been on this panel. I really wish you would have been a little bit more patient, a little bit more respectful, <laughs> but it's I okay. I get bored easily. I get you. I get and if, easily, if, if, and I'm so I, I understand. used to talking about yeah, this. I get you. Time, and yeah. if you're, if boredom, like, causes you to start to become disrespectful, then I, I understand. But that, you know, it, it, it is probably problematic and i think that's what happened here I, we really were going to get into some contention because that was part of the conversation eventually to start you are um, unbearably passive aggressive i got you you can call it passive is, aggressive is it you can outrageous. call it that if you want to i man mr girl you are right. unbearably indecent and you're insistent on interrupting Ooh, here but my point being lauren true. what i was hoping was i was hoping that eventually you would be willing to have a conversation with a bunch of people that did want to push back against you specifically regarding the great replacement is that something that you would be willing to do I don't like doing six people. Like, I think this is too many people for one panel in general. If someone sure. wants what to if have it's like four? a genuine, if, if someone wants to have like a genuine, like one-on-one -on -one conversation, I don't know why there needs to be like four, five, six. It, it, sure. If you want to have four people yelling at me, it probably won't be a conversation. It'll probably just be a yell, and, yell at and misinterpret Lauren. Like, look at how difficult it was just to actually get out of the two of you guys, Pedro Fanatic, that 
you hadn't watched my video. Like that was a whole back and forth. That was never and, difficult and, for me. I, you never asked me that question. Number I said one. right away. Hey, number, just, hold on. Just, it's okay. Just, wait, and, that, wait, and Pedro that, also that, answered that, the question. Definition, a definition back and forth of what we were talking about. I gave it directly. I, I don't mind. It, it is a difficult conversation because it's a complex thing. Those difficult conversations, I will say, I, I don't think you're the person to have them with Fanatic. Okay. There are better people to talk about that with. I understand that, that. I think can engage with them better. I think you're coming from a very ideological perspective. You have a bias already Lauren, when you have watched how can my you, content. How can you say that and when maybe, you've literally yeah, never I, had I, a I've got, how, bias? How can you how can you say spoken? that? How can you no, we you and I have literally never had a conversation, number one. Number two, on the times we've in never which had we, a conversation. I'm sorry, an individual conversation, which is what you're saying would be the, the the best appropriate thing to have these discussions. And two, when in the in the cases before, when we've had duo debates, one of the times you did tell me specifically that you would be willing to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me after we did the second de second two on two debate and in and afterwards, then you literally refused to have that one-on-one -on -one debate that you said you would Wait, do. What do you mean? So, when did I refuse? Let's check it out. It was in I the can see our chat. I got you. I it was. I yes, right you now. can, and yes, yes, you can. And you can, you can post where I refused. I've always been happy to chat I'm, with you. Mate. So you listen. Know that. So no, because repeatedly, well, we, you, I can, I can it, post it. I can post it specifically. Post it. Post I asked you. Up. I'm not going to do so right now, but specifically, what I am saying, I did, <laughs> and what you're aware of is, I specifically asked you multiple times about the one-on-one -on -one conversation. Are you denying that in our DMs? Did that happen? I'm reading them right now. Sure. Wait, fanatic. Yeah, also, okay. I have she to go in five minutes. Tim, I got you. Ten twenty-eight. Yeah, here it is. Know she it was this. It makes her think it, you're bad faith. Okay, it was this. After that. It was this. Ten twenty-eight, twenty twenty-one. I said, hey, we never scheduled the one one v one. When do you have time? You didn't respond. That happened. We, I, I, before I'm we. I'm looking even, for this. Wait. Two, like, two, while they're three. researching that, did I not 10, 28, give direct 21. answers? Like yes yeah. and no. But hey, wait, wait, wait. That's neither here nor there. Like, but the point is, you're not. Okay, dude, I just ignored you because I get so many messages. I get you. I if that's the case, I'm going to actually hey, that okay. fanatic. That's okay. fine. I'll set it up. I just, yeah, okay, I job. genuinely, we had a bit of a back and forth. We did a 2v2. I was happy to do that. Right. I'll, I'll, whatever. You know what? Like, I don't, I genuinely, I don't think you're the kind of person that I'm going to have a productive conversation with. I know people will just be like, oh, Lauren, you're just terrified of having this conversation. I'm not. I just think she there is. are some people that, some people that are more productive to have these conversations with. But if you really want to do it, he does. Fine. Go watch the video. Go actually research it. We can. He will. Fuck up, Steven. Okay. He's and going I, to. Trust me. I don't it's believe that you're being. I don't believe that you're being passive aggressive at all. But yeah, you've never had a conversation with know. me to make these statements. No, no, no. no. I, I am so mad. Steven is like we we talked about this before, and he's like, do the no, debate. No, she's lying. Do the lying. conversation. She, here's do the what conversation. she told me. She and said, I want to stem the debate again to help me with my rehabilitation tour. That's what she said. The fanatic, you have to be the one to shut her down. You are going to hell in these debates, and you are grabbing my ankle and dragging me down to your hell loop debate world and forcing me to do it with you. And this is exactly what it was. This is exactly what it was. You grabbed my ankle. You're on some fucking all right drug under there. So just Lauren, just to be clear, I did ask you for the 1v1. You did tell me you would do the 1v1. You did ignore that request. So it's not like, again, I wasn't. No, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Not, it's like, not it about totally wait, 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 Justin, please. it's not it's not it's not if just I, it's not just about like getting you to have a 1v1 because if you don't want to have a 1v1 with me that's fine but i just wanted to push well, back against it. okay good then i just wanted to push back against the statement that i had never asked Lauren's you for one or that you could or okay? that you could or that you could make this statement that i was not willing to have or that i never asked you or that i'm you, the person that this, this wouldn't be unproductive with considering you've never had a conversation with me and you you right. are completely unfamiliar with my content i Absolutely promise you it will based. be Unproductive. Okay. It I, might just, not I can be. I can tell by the way we're talking right now. Sure. Unproductive. Secondly, I think I think it's gonna be really. Good I never tonight. rejected or denied me. a debate with you. I ghosted you because I was bored. Sure. Of oh, your messages. That's wow. not rejection at all. <laughs> wow. I'm. I will do this conversation with you. Let's set it up. Uh, next Thursday, I'm speaking to Mr. Girl. We can do the one after that. All right, man. I, I mean, I don't think it's like, I just don't think it's going to be interesting content because my audience have heard it a billion times, but I will do it for the sake of the peanut gallery saying Lauren's trying to dodge. Lauren's trying to dodge. That's I'll not the purpose it. of it. But let now me ask we've you. got a date. Got okay. you. Okay. Hey, go. Really right. quickly, I got you. In order not for us to have this conversation, do you think you could probably link me the video of yours about the great replacement that you deleted from your, from your, from your channel? No, no, no. I, I got it in my debate prep. Don't worry. I'll send it to you later. I got the unedited one, okay? I'll send you the real shit. Are you being genuine, Desmond? Because I really need that. And if I'm going to have this conversation. Thank you. I appreciate that. I got you. Okay. Is this 
like, no, this is like Xander Hall. He's like, I want to debate you on this thing that I haven't even read yet. And then we like agree to the debate and he reads it and he's like, oh, actually, I didn't really uh, uh, disagree with much of that. So, we'll oh, see. no, okay, Fnatic we'll see if disagrees. That's the case. He's being we'll humble, but he's done. We've talked a lot about this behind the scenes. He's ready for this one. But okay, don't you have to leave? I do. I actually really do. All right. Bye, guys. Have fun. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Mr. Girl, did you want to suck up some more air in the room, please? Go ahead. What were you going to say? Jeez. Yeah, I do. Uh, I was going to say, uh, Stephen, do you have any? <laughs> what? Don't appeal to me. You said you wanted to talk. Say something. Yeah, my qu I have a question for you. Oh, okay. Sorry. Do you have any hope about this? No. Or do you feel like it's just going to swallow us all? It's going to get worse and worse. Um, Destiny, let me ask you the, the question I wanted to ask earlier. Do you, would you say, like, 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 let me just make sure, do you think it's yeah. reasonable in any way to hate people specifically mm -hmm. over, like, uh, the idea of, you, do you feel like there's, that that's, I guess that's it. Do you think that it's acceptable in any case to, like, uh, hate people? Because... Only if they have anime profile pics as well. Okay, wait, is the trans experience a valid experience? Be honest here. Like, can you just answer that? I think that's a dumb question. Every experience is valid, right? Like, a psychopathic murderer, child rapist can have a valid experience, but I, what, is, what does valid mean here? That's doing a lot of heavy work for us, right? Yeah, I, I, get, I get I get. I think trans people are real. I think the phenomenon is real. I don't think it's just a cry for attention or some fake thing that's being pushed on us externally. I think that there are people that it seems to be that we have some internal experience of our, like, sexual gender, and it seems to be that there are some people that they're either born with brains that don't match or through socialization or early development the brains don't match, and it seems to be that the best way to alleviate that is with some form of gender reaffirming care that might include um, hormone replacement therapy or, you know, gender affirming surgery. Right. And um, I think listen, that my, my, my main know. point being that like when pressed, I think that that was two questions, whatever. But when pressed, uh -huh. I think you're very, very much willing to like plainly state your thing. And it seems like for some people, it's almost impossible to get them to. I I'm not going to waste my energy trying to. But if, <laughs> if I was trying to get Mr. Girl to do that, like as has happened earlier, even in this discussion, he has the opinion yeah. that he should never do that. And I think that is kind of the distinction. This is why I think it's really problematic to lump in your band or the, the type of narrative that's associated with people that are praising your band with someone like Mr. Girl, who literally refuses to. Because I think that the like answer Mr. to my question, it's a very externalized thing for me. And it's something that I can like very easily point to. And it's something that like isn't really, it's just not a big deal. Like for me to say like, I like trans people. I'm not un it, like admitting an uncomfortable truth there or something, right? Now, if you were to ask the panel a question like, you know, have you ever thought about raping someone before? Well, now all of a sudden that's a lot more. One, that's a, it's a personal question. Two, it's a really uncomfortable topic. And three, like a, a degree of honesty there might lead you down roads that like make you sound like the worst fucking person in the world immediately. Or maybe a little bit less charged. You've heard about killing somebody before. Yeah, I, I don't want to answer it because, because I yeah, feel like the well, question I... is a lie and I feel like you're asking me to be more honest than you are. Okay. But I have to go. So I just want to say, I just want to wow. say. Wow. Um, no, it's kind. That's, I appreciate that. Really quick, Destiny. You, have you ever been racist? I just want to say, can I say one last thing before I go? Go ahead, Mr. Girl. Steven? Yeah. Oh, shit. Hi. I, I hate watching this happen to you. Oh. More than I hate watching it happen to me. Well, it's okay. We're here to suffer together now on the, in the, the vanished lands of YouTube, okay? Thank you for your contribution, Mr. Girl. Yeah. Destiny, really quick. Have you ever held racist views? Do you think prior to like kind of like your shit? <laughs> yeah, like absolutely. Left, Bro, I used to be a. Hardcore conservative. Yeah, I probably used to have some racist shit. Yeah. No, not just about saying it. Do you think you ha you held really racist? <clears throat> okay, uh, you know what? Honestly, um, no, I don't think so. I think that I had a unique upbringing. Actually, no, I don't think it was that unique. I think that some of the boomers failed and that they did a really good job at like teaching things um, that were correct by like the word. Uh, that they were saying, the words that they were saying, but they weren't very good at conveying the kind of like the underlying hatred. I don't know if that makes any sense. So like, for instance, I grew up with a lot of Catholic stuff being taught to me. 
And the that that messaging, if, if you're if you grow up like really Christian and you truly have like a good education related to scripture and the teachings of Jesus, it's pretty hard to come away from that like racist or hateful. Uh, you're just not gonna find that very much in the gospel. Maybe if you go to the Old Testament in some specific books, you can get some, but you have to like cherry pick that. So I think my parents did a pretty good job at giving me like those loving messages. And even if they ended up being kind of like anti-immigrant or pick yourself up by your bootstraps, um, that was a little bit more implicit and they did a bad job at transferring that to me. So like the most racist stuff I would have ever, um, you know, believed in growing up was that like black people are where they are in the United States because they're lazy. They don't work hard enough. That would be like the type of racism that I would have had, but it would have never been, I don't even know if I'd call that racism. It was just stupid, but I would have never been of the belief that like black people are naturally inferior to, um, to white people or some other race. Sure. I would have never believed that. I love that. And that's the last thing I'm gonna say. I promise I'll let, let you guys get, uh, get back into the conversation real quickly or before we end. But what I, what I would say is I think in almost all of these cases, there is a transparency, and now I don't know if you want to disagree with this or not. There is a transparency, it seems like, when it comes to you answering questions. It really seems crazy to me that we have to pretend as if, like, like all three of you guys are the same, or most people are the same when it comes to these political topics. Like, yeah, I, I cannot get I, those same I answers understand. from Lauren Southern the way I would with you, even though we're, I'm I, doing the exact same thing and cat, like, and, and, and asking these questions to you that I would. I, I understand right. what you're saying. Something that and I have to remind my audience of this too is that, like, I am a very inhuman person. I like arguing the same shit over and over and over again it's just it's fun for me i i truly enjoy the chaos and, and lauren does it and everything no i think that most people don't like to be questioned on the same stuff over and over again because i think it's exhausting it can get like um you can start to feel like drained in a negative way you can start to feel attacked all the time i like that if i can jump into a panel of five people all calling me uh, the f word and like crazy shit, that's fun for me i'll do that for eight hours i have done that for eight hours it's super fun but for a lot of people that experience gets exhausting and they start to get distrustful of everybody uh mr girl might be feeling it a little bit now that he's more online i'm sure lauren feels it because she's been online for fucking six years or whatever but like like when you feel like every time you go to a panel, somebody's like, what do you think about the Great Replacement? Like, they're not asking you what they what you think about the Great Replacement. They're getting you prepped for having like a 10 hour conversation about racism where half the shit they're gonna accuse you of is probably stuff you haven't even really said before. And the whole conversation is gonna be like getting them back on track for that kind of stuff. Now, if somebody confronts me on that, why are you transphobic? That's fun for me. I delight in people trying to hold me to shit I haven't said before because it's enjoyable for me. I like doing that. I'll go back and forth on that all fucking day. But for a lot of people, it's exhausting emotionally. It feels bad to do that over and over again. Sure. And I think one of the big problems is if someone starts making the assumption that they know my intentions and then using that in order to evade questions when I'm literally asking it in good faith. And I think all but this time- people will do that, right? I get you. That's, that's, Some people can- That's the can. normal human experience, right? When I deal with, if we're talking about like hooking up or like girls, right? When I approach a girl, um, I'm not going to assume that she knows that like I'm a respectful guy that wouldn't rape her or do anything weird. I'm going to approach her like, yeah, I understand like the experiences that exist in dating. And, um, you know, I'm going to approach you knowing how many experiences you've had with guys and how that goes. And I'm going to work within that paradigm. You can't just assume that they're going to immediately think of you in the best faith way possible you have to assume that they've got some set of collective experiences relating to people like you um i don't mean that in like a black way but like interlocutors asking about the great replacement and that they're, you probably need to approach in that way this is one of the big criticisms i've had if you looked at mr girl's conversation with lauren where he tried to get into these things with her if you're going to have that type of conversation with somebody you have to do a lot of work in building a rapport with them so that they trust you and believe you kind of like what a therapist would do they have to think that like when this person pops this question on me they're not just trying to get me but they really want to know the answer because immediately they're going to be distrustful of everybody approaching these topics. Mm, I feel that. Anyone else you guys got to say, say whatever you guys want? Yeah, I think, well, I think, oh. I think uh, oh. kind of the way this was demonstrated here was uh, it seemed to me like, Pedro, when you were, when you brought the, the, up the Great Replacement with Lauren or you brought up the, uh, I mean, you straight out said that you, that you think Mr. Girl might be grooming people on Discord or whatever. Um, so when you come from like that mindset, right, so, you, so you, you're coming at them with these kind of like... Um, uh, assumptions about their character and about what they do and about what they've said in the past, but you haven't really done any of the legwork to, to demonstrate to them that, you know, you know anything about what they said. Right. Um, and then I, I think, I think you're going to make them very defensive. You're going to make them think that you're just trying to get a gotcha. Right. So yeah, just in the future, I, I would say that, you know, be less uh, accusatory right? when, you, when you make the first, uh, you know, when you bring up the first topic. Yeah. Can I respond to that? Sure. So when I started, my whole uh, position here wasn't I trying to say moving forward what we should do is verbalize our positions better and not allow uh, dissident uh, whatever position you want, right or left, be the uh, you know promoting factor for how we are going to be viewed in the public eye. Rather, we make a message that is palpable 
and makes sense to everybody and is definitely distinct from those people. Did I not say that at the beginning? You did, did you, say did that, not but I think that? I think the problem wait, wait, wait. is I, I need that from Doobie because you didn't accuse me, Destiny. Thank yeah, you. you didn't accuse I, me I, I would accuse you. He yeah, just did. Fine. He just okay, did. Sure. Yeah, you did say that. Okay, thank you. So okay. you see how if I started the conversation that way, and then I'm identi we're on a panel where we're supposed to identify what 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 got us banned, and then I go into the scenario that might have got Lauren banned, and the scenario that might have got uh, Destiny banned, or the scenario that might have gotten Max banned. Do you think that's still disingenuous, even though I made that statement at the beginning? Yeah, but accusing them, or I don't know if you have to accuse them, uh, implying that they that they didn't lay out their uh, positions correctly or uh, fully, right? And this might this might be what led to them being banned. Um, when you haven't actually looked at the video for Lauren in Lauren's case, or watched, I wasn't Mr. trying to, but, but I wasn't trying to make it about the video, right? I was I just think, I think saying the issue for this what is I like, just said. I think I, the the issue is that like, you're basically saying you should be more careful about how you phrase things because people like me are going to aggressively misinterpret you. That's what the conversation right. felt like because that's essentially what was happening. Okay. Yeah, and, well, that, and that's basically that's what, what happened, happened to, I, I, to I, I guess I, did, I, I guess I did a bad thing where I also wasn't able to implement some of the advice that you guys said and I should have in a more distinct and direct manner said, hey, this is not attacking upon you. This is not attack upon you. This is review of history and actual planning for how do we attack the war in the future. My bad. I didn't do that well. Well, awesome. Wait, Wait, no, I I, I, hold on. I'm going to push harder on that. No. I think that the problem is it feels like you're part of the culture that bandwagons onto certain claims that you haven't validated, and then you push the same kind of prescriptive message that these people should be banned, or these same moral claims that these people are bad people, without fully understanding their positions. I think that's what came up in the few times when you were like giving hyper-specific examples. Of, so it came, it was twice. It had to do with the Mr. Girl pedophile stuff, and it had to do with the Lawrence and the Great Replacement stuff, where it seemed like you were keen to accept kind of the mainstream idea that either Mr. Girl was a pedophile or Lawrence Southern wanted black people killed or whatever, um, without fully understanding those ideas. And then anytime you presented your thoughts on them, it felt like you'd fully bought into that. So then it felt like you were kind of like part of that society that was doing that. I think that was the issue that was coming up. Right. And I'm just trying to say right now, the mainstream idea, right, is a very uh, uneducated one, right? It's the Fox News or the CNN uh, guy who, watch, that's the people who watch that every day. They're going to hear what you say and then they, they snap and say what you said in the be like in the beginning that I agreed with which is that's a Nazi now, or that's a blue, that's a blue haired leftist. You're out, right? What I want to ask uh, Lycan really quick, Lycan, did it, I was accused of, it took a long time to draw out definitions or direct yeses or nos or answers from me. Did you feel that? Um, you know, I'm going to be really honest. That was a, a segment of the, of the conversation that I was just kind of like, not super there for. Um, I think that because I, I've heard that conversation with her a, a lot. So it wasn't anything rude to you guys. It's just, I've heard that so many times. So I kind of knew how it was going. We kind of had a similar moment um, when we talked, Mr. Girl and her had a similar moment. So it was just, yeah. Anyway, the long story short is you weren't not engaging with her, but you both started getting really combative very quickly. And as soon as that she, happened, it was a question for a question, question for a question. And that's when it went like ping pong. Right. And didn't she, didn't she come in the room wanting a serious disagreement? I, I think it well, goes beyond that. Or am I, am I gaslit right now? Is that no, not it, what you came in saying? Do we, do, what, what, a, we or, okay, so I get what you're saying. There's a difference between a serious disagreement and what that kind of conversation was, or at least with the way that she took it, which is hearing that often. And because of that, it's kind of like Steven. Like, if you look at his Twitter behavior, he kind of Wrong. has a leg to sit on. Don't even start. Stand don't on. make that comparison. You don't think we don't so? Want to go there right now. Okay. No. So look, <laughs> yeah, I'll just say right. this: I don't think you basically you basically accused her of pushing Nazi talking talking points to like build an audience. Well, hold right, on, to like, so like latch onto the Nazi audience. That could be very true. And here's the crazy thing about it: for a person that was literally begging for some sort of contention, I think for someone to be able to ask those questions, I think that that person should be able to recognize Wait, the contingent. Hold on, I think I think I think that person 
should be able to hear those questions and respond. And it, and maybe you can make the assumption that the person is going to be like trying to pigeon you, uh, pigeonhole you into some sort of nonsense. But I think in order for like literally by definition, good faith would require you to at least engage with the person in order to have these conversations. And that's something that she literally refused to do, which causes the contention to get significantly more heated. Lichen? Like destiny. Lichen, destiny really lichen, 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 which responded, I just, lichen. I just wanted to make the correction that Respectfully, what she was arguing for was a bomb. Now, I I'm, I don't know I don't know what you okay. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> I don't even know you, and I fucking yeah. I I need to ask De Destiny. Do you you remember our confrontation? Me and you had a a quick uh window, like it was like only four minutes maybe. Uh -huh. You remember how I engaged with you, and I gave direct responses to every question you asked. There was no like side gate. It was very specific. You remember that at least? Not to say no. you remember what the content. Did you remember again? being direct with you when you were asking questions about about the Bible? Oh yeah, I guess sure. So, do you feel like I separated from that Pedro at all in this conversation? Was I was I ever snaky, trying to weasel around, you know, trying to get gotchas, or was I just going for the heart of the matter? Well, so something that happened earlier, I think, was I like. I think you tried to push her on the Great Replacement, but I don't think you had any idea what the Great Replacement was. I think that Wait, happened. He, he gave a definition that, of what the Great Replacement was. He after gave he one. looked it up and read it off. Oh, right? okay. Let me ask that, Pedro. Yeah. When you were having, like, when you like gave your opinion of the Great Replacement, did you look it? Be honest, please, for the love of God, you're a Christian. Did you yes. look it up during this? Okay, so I can't be. No, 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 no. It's no, it's no, no, no. I'm saying yes. I'm a Christian. No, my hands were right here. I think I was either smoking my cigar or whatever. I was looking right at you. While I was aggravated at the conversation, I was still engaged in listening. So you never Googled in any capacity the Great Replacement or anything like that? No. Wait, okay. then why didn't you just answer when she right asked Right here with you. Wait, when okay. she asked me what yes, it was, why cross. didn't you just answer immediately? Hold on. I Destiny. did. Well, That's what we he did do. No, no, we, we, well, I, I, I didn't. Did I, just... I didn't. I didn't. Destiny, I, I don't oh. know if you trust me or not or if you think I'm a liar. I 100 like percent. I no 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 nigga, just chill. I'm not like I'm not accusing you of anything. <laughs> I can't call, me that. I can't call you that. Don't do that to me, okay? But I, okay, I'm not, I just I don't stop. remember. I'm not accusing you of lying. I got you. Let me finish that's my that's statement that's so you can understand. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, what I'm ahead, saying is, I I, I I didn't look that up at all. And like basically the thing that like Pedro gave. I had an understanding of what that was. It wasn't that I, I hope you don't genuinely believe that my reasoning for not wanting to state what the great replacement was, was because I didn't know it. It was because I obviously felt like she was dodging the question because I'm asking her a direct question about something that she's done extensive videos about and she won't respond. Now I get that she can try to say, well, no, I just think maybe that you have some caricature of what the great replacement is that I don't want to denounce. I can get that. Maybe that's a possibility, but given the but fact that's exactly that what she said, right? I get you and I get that. And I feel like as opposed to that, what it was is that she was just trying to dodge answering the question as exemplified by the fact that immediately afterwards when pedro then answered and gave a definition she then tried to uh, to move the goalposts to something else to which i had i texted pedro and was like hey you gave your definition now have her to answer it. and she choose, still was trying to weasel around it until i finally like stopped everyone else from interjecting and said hey you said if he did it that you would answer yeah, it and I, that, then she finally that did that at that point yeah for sure i agree with that so you she had been dodging the entire time. time and that's well, that's where well, the problem i don't know was. if she's been dodging the entire time but i know that when you asked the second time after you'd given the definition it took her a little bit to come around to it that's true that absolutely did you had to ask her a couple times and then restate it and then she answered yeah right and well, so i well, felt like I'll she was dodging right. and that's that's what that's the reason why it wasn't about me like not sure, that is not true and i understand that but i'm just telling you from like as like a human speaking to a human right these people are incredibly defensive mr girl's suggestion was to not answer at all probably because he feels similarly about pedophile questions that these are almost always asked in the form of gotchas like these are like these people have, have been like ad badgered with these types of questions for years so i don't know about mr girl but at least for lauren so like you're gonna have to buy in a little bit more to get the trust or rapport necessary to get an answer to a question like that quickly otherwise it's always going to feel like a gotcha and that panel had been up to that point pretty combative where she'd already felt like people like hadn't watched the video didn't know what she was talking about so like she was probably hesitant to agree to anything and then like i said even mr grove was saying like don't answer right i get that and i feel like that the part of that problem is literally destiny and it's not just like an internet talking point but i do feel like that's literally the exact 
definition of bad faith. If you're approaching the conversation, assuming that a person is trying to get you and then therefore becoming insecure and defensive, then it beleaguers the conversation because now you start putting up all these barriers and making someone have to circum circumvent all of these little things that you like, these, these perspectives that you have. And as a result of that, now the conversation yeah. gets beleaguered. And while I get that maybe there's a reason and a justification, and I appreciate you providing that perspective as being someone that's been on defense in a lot of these conversations, but then for mm -hmm. someone like myself, who isn't trying to be in bad faith, who is genuinely yeah, trying I to be genuinely, that, like, then it's problematic. Her, she doesn't have that like background with you. She doesn't I have get you. That's so, what you build, right? I get it. Like, so if you came into that, a conversation with me, okay, if you came into a conversation with me, um, I'm such a bad example because I don't care because I like to fight. But like, let's say that I was a little bit more human, okay? And you asked me, Destiny, isn't it true that you thought about murdering a preteen before? Like, well, Jesus Christ. I mean, like, is the answer yes? Like, yeah, but like, we, there, we have to talk about so much for you to understand, like, where the fuck I was even at, what was going on, like, this kid was doing Like, I would have started talking a lot in order for me to get to that point. But when you ask me a point blank question like that, depending on what type of panel I'm on or depending on what's going on, I might just say, like, you know what? Fuck you. Like, I don't, I'm not even gonna, you yeah. know, fuck it. And now I'm Destiny, so I'll just say, yeah. And my only regret is that I didn't. Okay. Sure. But and most people are, are gonna be pretty, um, Reticent? Is that a word? Reticent. Uh, they're, they're, uh, yeah, whatever. They're, they're, sure. they're not going to want to engage with that question because they're going to feel like they're not about to have a real conversation. They're about to get led down like uh, personal attacks. I believe that. And I've done everything in my power. I've done everything in my power to specifically craft an environment in which the conversations are going to be good faith. And literally, it's supposed to be about like literal, literal conversations and not debate, bro, not hot okay, takes, no, no, not yeah, gotcha, what you're saying. Hold all of those things. Human, and and it seems impossible. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Human to human, okay? Listen, this isn't even a debate thing, okay? This is just a people thing, okay? Therapists do the same. You cannot bring a person into therapy on day one and be like, okay, I think you were raped as a two-year-old. Can you talk to me about that? Even you, And then you can't say like, hold on, I've spent all this time, I built this room out, I've talked to people, I've had so much therapy, right? With a therapist, when you get a patient on day one, it's the, it's the you're going through your incredibly stock standard conversation. It might be weeks or months or even maybe years before you can build the rapport up to the point where you can really dig into those things. Yeah. Whether or not you've built the environment is irrelevant. The thing is, is if do you have that one-on-one -on -one rapport with that person to start digging into those types of things? I think I've built a lot of environments in my stream for pretty good faith conversation for people to come on. But I know that when I bring somebody on for the first time, I can't just hammer into the hard questions. That's gonna be a back and forth that I have to build trust with over time. And I think everybody has to do that. Back okay, sorry. moving forward, here's something that I do plan on doing. I do plan on having more pre-production conversations and so people can truly get a grasp and an understanding of what exactly it was. I tried to do that with you. If you remember over and over, I kept saying, hey, I need to talk to you. I need you to understand what this conversation, I need you to get, like that was my goal. And it is my goal typically when I'm like booking people, most people can say I've had previous conversations where I've explain to them what my intent is, what the goal is. And that's my fault again, that I didn't have this conversation with Lauren Southern. She's incredibly dodgy. So it was really hard for me to do that. And like, literally I wasn't the one that booked her. I do have these conversations specifically with the purpose so that people can get an understanding of what the goal is. And I didn't have that with her. And maybe that's why she was being a little bit more feckless and a little bit more defensive. Um, it does like make the conversations a little bit more difficult. So it's not about me just like like trying to frame her as some bad actor necessarily. I think it, it I, I am taking in what you're saying that because of just the nature of what online course, like online discourse is, and like her not knowing me, then that made her be incredibly defensive, and so then I that made the conversation really hard. I got you, like, like, and I, I got you. I was just gonna like take it. my time going to it, just because of the fact that the last time I like insisted on you talking, you decided to mean. But go ahead. What did you have to say? The uh, so it might be just not the temple that you've built, but that one interaction. You ask her the question, and instead of her answering it, uh, she asks you the question. Why didn't you answer the question? Because up to that point. Every opportunity, like multiple times, she had already been bad faith in the conversation. So then it made me feel like she was being dodgy. Okay, 100%. So then there's a good chance that in her asking you that question and you refusing to answer it, she reacted the, the same. So that might be in the future. Ugh, I hate this meta Maybe conversation. Because it's good. It, you're, you're basically saying she, she was though. bad faith. You reacted to her bad faith. And then that allowed her to be bad faith. It's like, no, 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 no. I, well, I, no, no. Hold on. See, if you're good faith and you give some deference to Destiny's argument, there's a good chance she just asked it because like, fuck this again. What is your definition? Because I've had this conversation. True, I, I get times. that. I get that. So I understand that. Is, like the next time someone does that, maybe if you have the answer, I'm not saying you didn't. I'm just saying if you have the answer, maybe read that as a moment then here's my answer now let's continue the conversation I, I or even like that. the way the way that you the way that these conversations you drift into the questions is incredibly important too if i were to ask you a question about like um i, I can't even think of an example but if i were to ask you a very pointed question that seemed 
<laughs> sure. If I ask you a very pointed question about like um, interracial dating, like, like let's say that we're doing a panel or whatever, like there's two ways I could approach this. I could be like, <clears throat> okay, so I want to talk about some really complicated topics today, okay? Now, Fnatic, I think, said that he doesn't think that black people should date white women. Fnatic, do you want to like talk about like that? Or maybe that wasn't exactly, but what is your opinion on like interracial dating? I think the first thing you would say to me is you would go, N no, okay, no. You would say, uh, motherfucker, Tell me, like, what do you think I've said about interracial dating before? That's what you would say, right? But no. if instead, if I would have opened that conversation, if I would have instead been like, okay, I want to talk about some difficult questions relating to, like, dating. Fanatic, what is your position on interracial dating? I know a lot of people said so, but what, what do you, tell us what you think your position is. If I open up like that where the floor is very neutral, and then I give you the opportunity to present the idea first, now you're bringing it in in a non-tainted way instead of somebody else being like, Fanatic, you hate white women? Boom, tell us why. And then you're like, okay, now you're already having to play catch up coming from behind and you're already gonna feel like you're fighting before you even got the definition out there. I think that a subtle little difference like that makes a huge difference I in how the conversation goes going forward. You know? I hear that. But first that off, I would say 100% of the time, no, what, what I would... In Someone asked me that direct question just because I'm like really, really a stickler for responding directly to whatever people say. I would say, I believe this and I would give my reasoning. Like that, that's that. Because sure, I, but it's going to be literally more combative, any, right? Yeah. We're going to be a bit more combative if I start off that way. If, you say, and I, I, I will give my answer. I will give my answer every time, no matter what. And I'm, I, I literally sure, implore you time, to ever compare, find an example in any case ever in which someone has I'll ever asked me a direct example, question. And, and instead of that, me getting into meta, instead of directly responding to the question every time, the, literally the, find the me one example. That when I went down and we had your show in person, mm -hmm. that conversation that we had in your show, we've had that before on podcasts. The sure. only difference is, is you're screaming at me while I'm playing piano and then I'm screaming at you while you're screaming back at me. And that's all the conversation. Is, right but the difference was that in that in that less heated environment i think we were both open to letting the other person kind of like set the environment for the statement rather than bringing out the very aggressive statement and then having them defend or attack it or rebuild it right off the bat i think that's the difference i get you but i just but i still want to stand by the fact that literally anytime anyone asks me a question i respond to the question and i implore you to look at literally any of the conversations i have that i will always I, and, and find me an example where that's not the case i don't believe in dodging questions i will always respond to the question now i might respond to the question and then give like some more uh, other caveat and maybe there might be a time where i like kind of like flub it up a little bit and then if they ever point out to me like hey you didn't answer it's like, oh my bad i'm sorry succinctly and i will answer the question i've never gone on like long examples of like dodging a question that's just not the way i communicate that's not the way i speak because i always believe if i give the answer and somebody tries to run with it i will find a point where they've deviated or extrapolated with my answer and i'll stop them at that point but i can at least answer the question first i've always made that appeal and that's just the way i approach things because i think that's the very nature of good faith i believe that i have enough intelligence to recognize if somebody has deviated from my answer in such a way that i don't that i need sure, to like, I, like like clarify that but we're not just talking this isn't like plato's dialogues like this is like human to human interactions like everybody that we're dealing with is like an imperfect person that's going to have their own approach to these conversations right they might not I'll be, you know, sure. holding to the same strict lines of, or they might not even know that you think like that. They might just think that you're looking for dunks, you know? Yeah. I got you. I hear you. Um, and this guy just kind of switched to a whole different topic, just about the, the meta of the freaking panel, which is fine. Uh, it happens. Um, <sighs> moving forward, like, okay, but first let me ask you this. Do you think that you will, do you think you'll be unbanned? When they say the word indefinite, it just means it's oh, like, maybe six to 12 months from now, I'll probably try and appeal to an album. So, you know. Six to 12 months. Um, how long were you banned after the protesters' statement? You know, I didn't get banned for that. You got be partnered. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's right. That's right. How long did that last? Forever. You have like a, a you haven't been repartnered. Was it like a year? No, I know. Oh, I you're, know st you're still you're still not repart. But I I, th no. I thought you didn't want to be partnered because it allowed you to do the YouTube. Yeah, true. I do a stream. Yeah. Yeah. So then at that point, but like, do, is the option for you to be partnered again has that been reinstated? Um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm probably not gonna apply because I want to still dual stream. Okay, that makes a bunch of sense. Anybody I else? think that something that like if you want to have, and for anybody, I think for for all people that want to have like challenging interactions with people, I think that the this is true of almost every interaction you have in life. Whether you're trying to hook up with somebody, whether you're trying to have a conversation with a friend, a parent, about a child, whatever. I think that the most important thing is you have to create an environment, and this has to be done every single time. It's not already created because these environments are created on the fly. They're like these immaterial things that exist in a moment in time. You have to create an environment where a person feels like they can say anything without being super judged. 
That's like the, that's the goal. My goal when I'm having an intimate conversation with somebody, or if I'm trying to have a good conversation on stream, is I want the other person to feel like they could say anything that they genuinely believe, and I'm not gonna jump down their throat for it. I could ask them a difficult question, and they have, they feel like they have the safety to explore that topic around me, and maybe even say something they don't 100% believe, and I'm gonna be there to kind of like walk along in the garden with them with that conversation, rather than constantly trying to set a fucking, you know, forest on fire and watch them burn alive with the stupid shit they're saying. I think that's the difference, or I think that should be the goal when you're trying to set up these conversations with people. It ha if you're trying to get somebody out of their box to, to have an intimate conversation with you about challenging topics, they have to feel like they're in a safe space to do it. Otherwise, it's instantly gonna be like the debate bro brain where you're trying to protect your own reputation, your own self, your own spirit, and you're constantly on the defense and you're looking to like swing swords at somebody rather than to sit down and have a talk with them. I think it's the, 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 yeah, the challenge. Yep, that makes sense. Anybody else? I think we can kind of, I don't know. I don't have very much more to say on this topic. I feel like it was kind of discussed at the best of, even though there were like crazy, crazy like deviations and whatever. This is, this got kind of like derailed really, really early. And I think I allowed Lauren Southern to do that, which is really my fault. hundred percent. We were having a conversation and then she answered, well, there's no debate. And then we kind of got off the, off the rails. Um, that's my fault. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just happy it wasn't me this time. I don't remember well, last time was Chud and Mr. Girl. Yeah, wasn't I don't it? Think well, last time I last time I pissed off Chud on purpose, and then it led to the whole drama. So I felt oh. I felt kind of bad about that. Uh, okay. I didn't feel bad about that because I think if if you Who's make Chud? if it's a, that's a nice guy. If you make a very like innocuous statement, and in response to that, somebody becomes incredibly oh, belligerent. I don't think that I can possibly hold. I don't. I. I, I, I while I, I can like not like the fact that you made some little cheap shot, I, if the fact that his like incessant belligerence was a response is absolutely. I might not like that Chris Rock made a joke about Will Smith, but him going up and slapping him on the face, I think we can probably like recognize and say this thing was inappropriate even still. And Chris Rock can say, hey, I regret that joke. It doesn't change the fact that Will Smith acted really inordinately, despite the joke. And that's where I stand. I do um, think something that's really important for future panels, um, Lauren said this in a very passive aggressive or aggressive aggressive way, but I think something that would be good is you need to have diametrically opposed viewpoints when you come to the panel. Otherwise it does kind of feel like uh, we're all just kind of like talking about something that we all agree about and there's sure. not much going on. I, I hear so having, that. It's hard to find people on the other side, but like having a few people that would have strongly supported the position of like, you know what? I actually think these bands were good for the platform. I think the TOS is justified. And then like, let's have a talk around that. I think would have been really interesting, but it's hard Hard to find you should have had Josie on. Sometimes, wait, hold on. Nope, that's exactly what the point I was going to bring on. Sometimes I think it is like really good to have those things. Sometimes I do just want a conversation. And here's the problem here. I can't think of a single person that would have the position that it was good for you to be banned that wouldn't go into straight debate, bro, nonsense, hot take, like whatever. Like, for example, I, I can't possibly, considering what like the environment that I want in this panel and so on and so forth, I couldn't possibly have Demon Mama be on this panel and have this conversation with you. It wouldn't work. I couldn't possibly have. There's that, who's that? There's like this blonde haired Norwegian girl, Katie, I think. Is she, I don't know if she's Scandinavian. Oh, yeah, I know she, Katie. Yeah, she seems, is, I disagree with her. I think she's crazy, but I shouldn't say crazy. I disagree with her, I, I, super disagree. but she seems like she's capable of having these conversations. Um, I wish I knew of those people. If I had those people girl. and I was aware of them, then I would do it. I, I'm just not aware of any people that, that, are, that yeah, I'm it's familiar hard to, with. It, it is that. hard to find them. I know like two or three that maybe could do it. Yeah, that is true. It's, it's difficult to find these people. Oh, she's Israeli, I'm sorry. Yeah, that would be awesome. I would have loved that. I like people who have opposing views. It's just when it comes to like trans things, I. It's hard for me to find anybody that like would push back against the sports thing that wouldn't that become be belligerent. Yeah. It's, that's it's... that's the problem. How do you do that? Um, and but I would love that. I I want opposing views, but just opposing views from people who are capable of having charitable and decent conversation. And that would be mm -hmm. a difficult thing specifically around. That. But yet yeah, that is the goal. But I do think there's also a problem though if you think that because we don't have opposing views that it's, we're not capable of having a conversation. Um, well, the problem is that it just feels kind of like a circle jerk. Like we all just make this like, don't we think this is bad? And then we all agree it's bad. And then it's like, okay. Yeah, that does. Like I, like I by rule, by default, I usually avoid those types of conversations. If I say that it's like, that's why I usually ask people um, before I do panels, like, oh, like who, who is here on the panel? It's not if there's people that I like. It's so that I know there's opposing points of view. Otherwise, like, fuck, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. I think. Go, yeah, I mean, we ended up finding a lot before. to. We ended up finding a lot to disagree about. Um, that that wasn't like the the topic of the panel. But yeah. now that we've we've kind of done the, um, you know, support group for people who think censorship is bad, uh, do you think you might want to work on something similar with with Kadion with a couple other people? Because I I know some people who are like active in the Twitch 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 sphere. I would do that. Uh, Destiny, do you, feel do you feel comfortable? Like, ha dang, it sounds such good. I didn't. I don't. 
I don't want it to just set you up to be like a person that's on crazy defense, even though I know you don't mind it as I much. love that. If you send me up in a 1v8 panel, I'll do it. I don't know why you would say that. I'll do that all day. That's super enjoyable for me. I don't okay. give a fuck. But do you think you could do so like with the fanatic rules? Yeah, of course I can. Yeah. I like talking to people just good there. Sure. He okay. can hold up to Dylan's rules. I think he can, he can do yours. Okay. Dylan's yeah, kind yeah, of a, a fascist about it. Okay. Then in that case, then yeah, then maybe that's what we'll do next week. I will try to find people more than capable of being decent that actually feel like your ban was justified and engage in the conversation. Uh -huh. Structure that. We'll try to do that sure. next week. And you can also make it so that it's not so weirdly personal, although it will get kind of personal too, is it can be like a more, the general topic can be like, do you think we should be banning people for holding positions that could be hateful? Like that would be like a general topic and then it, the focus would be maybe around my ban, but it would be a little bit more than just like that the entire time. It would be sure. like a panel, yeah. Sure, that makes sense. I will put out the call. Anybody who has that, please like reach out to me on Discord, Fanatic, hashtag, should I say that publicly? I don't care. Fan reach out to me on Discord or on Twitter. I think that might be easy. And then we can like, I, I, I would like to have some pre-production conversation with some of the people that are capable of like actually justifying that position. And I would like to hear people that are capable of, fortunately, people like Dino yeah, I, I can, uh... are not capable. And Doobie, please help me with that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know lots of those people. I, I can get you in touch with them. Sure. Okay. That'll be really, really good. Um, man. Sorry, this one turned out that way. Uh, for the record, I just want to say that I got, like, there were quite a few people who had reached out to me specifically saying, talking about uh, just the influence that Destiny had. There was a point in time when Destiny and I really had some pretty serious disgust with Destiny over one of our conversations. But then, like, some of my really close friends reached out to me, or, or I don't, either way, reached out to me and were explaining to me, like, who Destiny has been on the platform and like who he was to them, people who I very much admire and value. And then like just kind of seeing him like go into smaller panels like uh, Prime, I distinguish him entirely from like people like Vosh or Hassan who being willing to engage and not having, it seems like this clout sharky, uh, a clout sharky mentality of just, uh, this person is smaller than me, so I don't want to platform them or I won't want to be engaged with that. Like being willing to be in smaller spaces and whatever, just like that to me was something that I valued and something that I respected specifically about Destiny. So then, and, and then just kind of wanting to be like uh, the person like to fight back against like the accusations against Prime and things like that. And just being a person that stands for like his positions. Even if I think online, on Twitter, bro, he has to be the most like hot takey, intentionally, like whatever person, like, you know, baiting people into conversations and stuff. But ultimately, I think the person that Destiny has been on this platform is somebody that I've absolutely respected. Um, even if he had no business t tweeting out the N word. Um, but so I think with that being nah, said. that was fine. No, it wasn't. I think him being on this platform, I think, is a net positive thing. And it's some I've always respected Destiny as a person. And I know he hates compliments, so that's where I'll stop. Um, I appreciate you guys all being in this conversation. And we hope we'll have a positive thing. Thank you for the invite. Any? Yeah, thanks. Any, it was a uh, fun conversation. Yeah, last take. You really last adopted takes. the yeah, that was fun. Post. Okay. Who's um, going to do it? Destiny. Who would buy it? But, hey, I got one more question. I mean, I got, I got one more thing. Um, you guys can absolutely listen to my music. I just released an album about three weeks ago. The album is called oh Pneumatic, P-N-E-U-M-A-T-I-Q. I am a pianist. It's a piano-based album. I think it's particularly good. I want Destiny to review some of the songs on it. He has some of them, but either way, we're going to figure something out like that. And as well as everyone else, please listen to the album. It's available on all platforms under the name Fanatic. Um, Fanatic, Pneumatic, spelled with, like, you know, disambiguation. Um, yeah, please check that out. I'm a musician. Uh, Better than Destiny at it. <laughs> yeah. My piano works just fine. Cool. So, are we just the signing out right talking, now? So. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, right, we're not going to go setting, there. Setting out, I'll sign out right now. Uh, so, hey, guys, my name is Pedro. I come from, the, I'm the co owner of the Crucible. That's where I come from. If you want to see people handle questions uh, with a mature manner, answer them directly, and not have to dodge, you can go and schedule a debate with us anytime. You can see me debate there. That is the Crucible. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. Once again, Fanatic, Destiny, thank you for coming. Doobie, thank you for coming. Lycan, it was fun talking to you. Uh, yeah, and uh, the other two panelists who left early, thank you for coming as well. Lycan, you got... Oh, you and also, also, I'll say outright, no, I do not believe Lauren Southern is, you know, an internal racist, a closet Nazi. I don't believe anything, uh, anything like that of the sort. I'll restate once again. I think we can verbalize our opinions better and make ourselves separate and distinct from those far crazy left uh, blue blue haired people or those far right uh, Nazi people. All right. That's all I'll say. Like an outro. Hi, thank you for having me, Fanatic. I don't know if I've ever been on one of your panels before, um, but I do appreciate it. Uh, Doobie, I don't know if we've. I think we've been in a call before at the same time, maybe with Destiny or something. But otherwise, I don't know. 
Um, nice to meet you. Destiny, later, dude. Pedro, nice chatting with you. Um, and that's it. Obama. Cool. Okay. And uh, Doobie? Uh, yeah, I'm Doobie with the Politics Discord, discord.gg slash politics. And yeah, thanks for having me on. All right. Destiny. Hi, I'm youtube.com slash destiny. I do stuff. All right. I love you all very much. Twitch.tv slash Mr. Fanatic. We're going to have a follow up conversation about this panel. Anybody that want, wants to be in it, it's going to be an open panel. Um, and then that'll probably be on Twitch.tv slash Fanatic. It'll probably be like 8.45, which can take a break, and then we'll have that conversation. Love you all. Thank you guys for being part of the panel.